Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed that exercise. Now we're going to move on to the second type of equity model that we're going to learn about today, technical models. Just like fundamental models are built on fundamental analysis, technical models are built on technical analysis, which means an entirely different methodology is used to determine which equities are added and removed from these models and in which proportion. Technical analysis is a type of active asset management that is heavily driven by the examination of market data rather than indicators of corporate health that a fundamental analysis would take into consideration. This means that rather than looking at the income statement, balance sheet, and cash flow statement of a company, technical analysts are instead looking at the price history, volume, and other market metrics of a particular asset, along with the charts and trend lines that show how these data have changed over time. Theoretically, a technical analyst could look at the chart of any traded asset, whether it be a stock or commodity, and tell you whether they believe it's a good time to buy or sell it without even seeing its name or knowing what industry it belongs to. Technical analysis has very old and very interesting origins, as it was first used over 300 years ago by rice traders in Japan, who would chart the price and volume action of rice, which was a very important commodity at that period of time, and then make note of patterns and trends, and then use those findings to generate trade ideas. Today, Technical analysis is used by many traders and investors globally. Interestingly, while technical analysis does have a large amount of adherence, it also stands in contradiction to fundamental analysis. And there's been a lot of research done which says it's more or less inconclusive as to whether or not there's a material benefit to following a technical analysis methodology. With that said, it's up to you as an advisor to determine which methodology best fits into your practice within the context of your own investment philosophy. Additionally, it may be worthwhile to have a technical model in your toolbox in case you end up working with clients who prefer to invest in this manner. With that said, let's get into some of the key concepts that govern how technical models are built. Rather than reviewing the intrinsic values of companies that financial analysts calculate, which is how fundamental models are built, technical models are much more data and rules driven. Often, technical models are built and managed by algorithm and are frequently built using programming languages like Python and R. At a high level, a massive volume of historical market data is typically ingested by the analyst or advisor that's building the model, which is pulled in from a trusted market data source like Bloomberg or Reuters. This data is then used to calculate and highlight a number of technical indicators, which are pattern-based signals produced by the price, the volume, and the open interest of a security or a contract. The analyst will then define what constitutes a buy or a sell signal and add those instructions into their algorithm. Essentially, this is how trade ideas are generated by the algorithm. And the opportunities that the analyst or advisor has the highest amount of conviction in can be added to their model. Now that we know how technical models are built and managed, Let's have a look at some common technical indicators that are used for decision making in this methodology. The first set of indicators are moving averages. A moving average is basically the rolling average price of a stock over a particular period of time. And analysts will look at a number of different periods for different reasons. Using a moving average will essentially smooth out the price of a stock which removes some of the inter or intraday price volatility from an analysis. 20, 50, 100, and 200 day moving averages are all commonly used by analysts. But a moving average can be calculated for any time period. 
Think about it. If you're analyzing a stock that's extremely volatile, but range bound, it may be helpful to smooth out the price for better decision making. Let's take a look at that in an example. Take a look at the daily closing price of this stock, ABC Inc., for the last 20 trading days. It's quite volatile. Some days the price is down into the high teens, and other days the price is up into the low 20s. However, as you can see, the average price over the last 20 days was $21.65 which gives you a better sense of where the stock actually is priced after removing some of the noise that comes from volatility. This is an example of a simple moving average, or SMA, which is an equally weighted average over the time period. Technical analysts will sometimes also use exponential moving averages, or EMAs, which give more weight in the average calculation to the price on the most recent days and less weight on the price in less recent days in an attempt to make their model more responsive to recent information. This is called adding a recency bias to the analysis. Analysts will often compare moving averages over different periods with one another, such as looking at the 50, 100 and 200 day moving averages on a single chart to determine if the price of a stock is in an uptrend or a downtrend, which will help to inform their decision making. Another set of indicators that technical analysts will use in their models are oscillators. Oscillators are momentum indicators that are tracked over time and are bounded by a defined upper and lower band. When oscillators approach these upper and lower bands, they signal that the stock may be overbought or oversold. These overbought and oversold indicators are often used in conjunction with moving averages to signal trade ideas. A commonly used oscillator is the RSI, or Relative Strength Index. Now, the specifics of how this is calculated is outside the scope of this course, but at a high level, this oscillator ranges between 20 and 80, and if the RSI starts to exceed 70, the stock is considered overbought. If it drops below 30, it's considered oversold. These types of indicators can be used as further evidence to confirm that a suspected trend is taking shape. The final category of technical indicator that we're going to cover today are Bollinger Bands. Bollinger Bands are a very commonly used indicator that were first implemented by a well-known technical trader named John Bollinger. What analysts will do here is first calculate their preferred simple moving average for the stock that they're analyzing. This is most commonly the 20-day SMA, but any amount can be used here based on the analyst's preference. Next, an upper and lower band are charted on either side of the moving average, which is usually placed two standard deviations above and below the mean. Now, from statistics, we know that 95% of the stock's trading activity will take place within the upper and lower band if we're using two standard deviations. As the stock's price approaches the upper or lower band, this indicates that the stock is becoming more and more overbought or oversold. If the stock actually breaks through the band on either side, which is known as a breakout, the price has done something extremely statistically significant and may be used to signal a trade. So we've just had a crash course on the methodology and some of the indicators that drive technical models. But how do you position this to your clients? Well, this is a little bit tougher than the positioning we discussed for fundamental models. I mentioned earlier that models driven by technical analysis are more of a niche strategy and won't be as suitable for a wide range of clients. Additionally, there's a lot of skepticism out there about the value that technical analysis can bring to the table. My advice here 
would be to not make technical models the foundation of your practice or your investment philosophy when you're designing solutions for your clients. Instead, you can position these models as an additional layer of diversification that's available, which can benefit your clients during choppy markets. For example, if, of a client's equity allocation, you were to recommend allocating 80% of their capital to a fundamental model and 20% of their capital to a technical model, you would have diversification across different securities as well as strategies. This is something that you can highlight to your clients, which will differentiate your style of management from the competition. Additionally, because of the rules-based decision-making that's a key part of technical models, you can call out the benefits of data-driven trading.